Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the Porsche road trip down to Airwater in Costa Mesa. If you haven't seen that episode, I recommend head back and check that out if you're into uh, cars of all kinds. This episode, we are gonna be working on the Subaru. Sorry to leave you guys hanging on the 68 project. Um, just because I have, I had Airwater and now I've got Overcrest Rally coming up, I've had to kind of put this thing on hold. We will get back to that in a few weeks. Um, we've got Power Tour coming up and stuff like that, so in between getting back from Overcrest and going to Power Tour, we might do a little bit of work to this. For now though, it's time to get the GC8 ready for Overcrest Rally in Utah. There's a few things I need to go through on the car. By a few things, I mean this whole list. Gotta check the pinion angle, it's the power steering pump. Gotta swap a stainless brake line because of the one that I broke. Have to inspect some things. I'm gonna change up the exhaust. We're gonna do sort of our own version of a Hayward and Scott Group A style exhaust. I'm gonna add a flex joint in there. We're gonna V-band it off the downpipe. I'm gonna do some TIG welding. It's gonna be a lot of fun. One thing that I bought for the original rebuild, I'll move my passport into its spot. Anyway, one thing that I bought for the original build of the car to go on the first Overcrest Rally in Oregon that I did was a dash flocking kit. I wanted to flock the dash because as you can probably already see, this thing glares like crazy. It's that shiny vinyl material. So what you do with a dash flocking kit is you sand this all, rough it up. It's got a primer on it that goes on it, adheres to it. And then what you do is you sprinkle, it's almost like a felt material and it cuts glare on the dash. If you look at old Group A rally cars of all kinds, race cars of all kinds, they all do it because when this thing gets in the sun, this section of the dash literally blinds me in the window. I can't see, you can see my hand already. And you can see there, that's where all the glare goes. I might actually knock that out today, just rip the dash out, it's not too bad. I will take center console out, uh, the shroud around the uh, steering wheel, the steering wheel itself comes off pretty easy. Uh, and then the lower, kick panels here and the glove box. All in all, it probably takes about 45 minutes to get the dash out and get everything unplugged now that I know how to do it. Uh, so we might work on that first and then get this dash flocked, leave it out to dry and put it back tomorrow. And then tomorrow we should have... Anyway, I'm gonna poke around, uh, get a plan formulated here and start working. I'm really excited. This is gonna be a very fun adventure. Like I said, the adventure always starts right here, turning wrenches, so. Let's get to it. Woo! Gone. The interior. There's the dash. So I've had this flocking kit in my cabinet since the last Overcrest rally back in the fall in Oregon. I bought it from a company called Hard Motorsport or Six Overcrest, uh, same company that made my door carts. The process to get this done is pretty simple after the dash is out. You gotta sand it down, fill in any imperfections like cracks or holes. Included in the kit was this little air gun that you fill half full of flocking material. You hook it up to your compressor at about 30 PSI, rub down the entire surface with alcohol, and then you spread out your primer or adhesive, whatever you want to call it. You got to work fast because it sets really quick, and then you go to town with the, uh, with the applicator. Make sure you get nice, even coverage. If you get any low spots after it dries, you can spray it with acrylic enamel paint, and then reapply, and it will kind of take care of any bald spots. Blocking the dash is all done for now. I'm gonna crawl underneath and disconnect the exhaust of the downpipe, slide it out, and then start working on getting the drive shaft out. So after doing some research, I found out that pinion angle can make a difference in vibration and harshness in these cars, even though it is a two-piece drive shaft. I wanted to inspect it, so I did take out the exhaust. It was coming out anyways, and then I worked at taking the lift cover off and getting the drive shaft out to get my digital angle gauge on and see where we were at. Getting the drive shaft out isn't too bad. Four bolts on the rear flange, two bolts on the carrier, and it comes right out. Took the mustache bar bushings out as I found out that they were sitting upside down. Uh, these are bushings that I've replaced. These are super pros. And uh, if you notice, the top side is a lot thicker than the bottom side. What I did on the other side is I pried this bushing out flipped it to the top side, and even with a washer we took out, it's way shorter than this top bushing uh, because they're just a sandwich bushing that you press in here and there. You can get them out really easily. So I'm going to swap these like I did on the other end over there, and uh, that's actually going to rock our pinion angle up just a little bit. And, uh, you know, it should help the vibration. In theory, it should. 
I'll, uh, I'm gonna finish this up and then I will see you right back here first thing in the morning. Later. Yo, so we're back. Uh, we're gonna V-band this downpipe and work on the exhaust. Uh, so I measured my line here. This is where I'm gonna cut directly on the edge of this tape line. And that will be where our V-band clamp will line up with and where we'll weld to on the main part of the exhaust right there. As you can see, V-band. And uh, I'll have to measure once I get to this side. We're gonna put a V-band here. We're gonna section in a flex, flex joint there. Down here, we're gonna throw a resonator on there. And then we're gonna chop this muffler off and we have a cool, it's over there, dual tip, uh, exhaust tip there. I'm gonna get right to it and uh, start cutting. We're gonna start making this exhaust. So a couple years back, I had my friend Anthony fab up the stainless steel exhaust with the downpipe that came on the original 207 with the car. Anthony's work has held up really well over time. It's taken a severe beating on rally cross, back roads, and over crest. The downpipe is pretty worse for wear and the flanges were all warped and bent, so I decided to replace them with V-bands. Tack weld them in place with the MIG welder and then finish them off with the TIG. I was hoping to show you guys all that, but unfortunately, I maxed out my memory card and didn't realize and kept trying to record or hit record without actually recording anything. That's what I get for going in between two cameras. Anyway, that's just how rushed I was this week, but got the exhaust all wrapped up and got ready to button up the rest of the car. All right, welcome back. Here's where we're at. The exhaust is fully welded out, except for the exhaust tip, because I have to put it on, put the hangers on. My TIG welds are not exactly what I would call stacking dimes. It's more like I'm throwing change in the jar, but it's sealed up, it's stuck, it's solid. It'll be good for what we're using it for. The rest of the exhaust is pretty damaged still, so it's probably gonna get remade at some point anyway. Whatever. Right now, I'm gonna put it on the car, we're gonna mock up the hangers, and then cut where we need to, to put tip on, and then we're gonna bolt it up and it's done. So unfortunately, this is where more of that footage is missing. I just really, really was not paying attention to the camera as much. I was trying to get everything done, and just thrash. Like I said, the exhaust turned out great. I loved the look of the new tip. My welding turned out pretty decent, aside from some small snafus. Alrighty, so I uh, freshened up the downpipe. I scuffed the whole thing down and uh, Cerakoted it with that VHT uh, header paint, ceramic header paint, whatever. You basically like heat it up, spray the paint, heat it up again, do another coat. You just use the Tiger torch or a propane torch, whatever you got. I'm gonna get the downpipe ready to go back in get to it. All right. Fresh looking downpipe ready to go in. I got the gasket in the, on the turbo already. Getting the downpipe in the GC8 is not too bad of a task. Basically, you have to take the intercooler off. You don't have to remove the steering shaft. There are some tough nuts and bolts on the bottom side to get at, but if you have crow's feet and Short, stubby ratcheting wrenches makes it a lot easier. Just have to take your time, really be thoughtful of where you're placing your wrenches, where you're making your turns. And it is a cinch. Got the O2 sensor in, got the intercooler back in, blow off valve all hooked up. And it was time to lock that V band in place for the last time, get it all lined up. And eventually, it was time to fire up. I think we can start this up, see how it sounds. Sounds good. Exhaust is done. Sweet. The last big item to do on the list was the power steering pump. You have to remove the upper radiator hose and of course the power steering lines themselves. I kind of screwed up because I thought I could take the front bolts off and then just remove the pump itself, but you actually have to take the entire accessory bracket off the left side from the alternator. 
once I figured that out, everything was a cinch. Pulley came off, everything else came out. The bolts were all lubed up from the ATF leaking out of the power steering pump previously, so they weren't tight or hard to get out. The whole housing and everything came out. We got the new one in, we're good to go. All right, power steering pump is done. I got coolant in the radiator and the overflow and everything. Not the overflow, the expansion tank and everything. Um, can't fire it up and bleed it right now. Kiddo's sleeping, I'm not gonna wake her up. Uh, so I'm gonna call it a night. I am pretty happy with how far I've gotten. I have literally a brake service, an oil change, oil change, not wool. Um, and I gotta weld something in the, that, I gotta weld those tie downs that I made for the trunk, which I'll show you at some point. So I'm gonna throw this belt back on and go up here. <laughs> The following day was the last full day to work on the car and basically I was going to be focusing my attention on the braking system. Gave the front brakes a service with new pads, cleaned up the sliders and the pins, got everything lubed up, nice and fresh. On the passenger side however, I did have to remove the caliper and the rotor because the damage from the brake fluid leaking after we blew that line in California in the winter was pretty extensive so I scuffed the entire bottom of the shock up, hit it with some red caliper paint as it'll take kind of the same amount of abuse and it sort of matched the KYB color just to get it freshened up and protected. Then serviced the caliper on the bench, got the sliders cleaned up, got everything back in, got it ready to go back in the car. These calipers could use another powder coating but I'll probably tackle that next year. Once I got the braking system done it was time to get the car down, get it started up, and shake it down. This thing sounds good. It's loud, but it sounds awesome. Oh yeah. I'm driving the GTI all week in the Mustang, which the Mustang's pretty crazy, but this thing is like you're in a tin can with a motor and a transmission and everything is like, woo, right in your ear. After a highly successful shakedown, I had to stop one of my favorite spots to grab some B-roll of the car. It's running good, there's no issues, there's no leaks, everything's ready to go. Before I go, I just have to adjust the e-brake and make a few minor tweaks, and we'll be ready to take on the road all the way to Mexican Hat in Utah, where the Overcrest Rally kicks off. As always guys, be kind, drive hard, and I really hope, on my way to Utah, on my way to Overcrest, I see you on the road.